Hi, I'm here today to talk to you a little bit about what happens when someone sadly passes away. Um, I'm a private client solicitor, so this is something which we unfortunately have to come across um, quite frequently. I'm just going to set out a few of the steps to go through if you are dealing with an estate yourself. Obviously, feel free to contact me if you want our assistance in administering an estate, but this blog is just a few steps that might help you if you're trying to do it, like I said, yourself. Um, so the first thing to do when somebody passes away, sadly, is having to register the death. So it's like when you register a death or a marriage, you have to go and attend quite frequently the town hall, um, or the, there are plenty of places where you can do it, probably local to yourself. Um, go ahead and register the death. So you have to take along with you a medical certificate, which is what a doctor will have signed to say the cause of the death and uh, it's four pounds then to get the actual medical certificate which is signed off by the registrar um, you have to ask answer sorry quite a few questions when you go for the uh, meeting about the deceased so make sure you know things like where they were born their occupation etc um, as well as getting the death certificate you'll also get what's called a bd8 form which if the deceased was elderly and they were in receipt of state benefits will be a form that you send on to the DWP to advise them that they've passed away and it stops all of the benefits. Um, there's also now uh, what's called a Tell Us Once service at, at many of the places where you register a death, which is an appointment after you've met the registrar to um, go through with an, a different person about um, who else the, the, the deceased perhaps was in touch with at the local authority. It's things like stopping mail that goes to their house from the local authority, stopping the council tax, etc. So once you've registered the death, you'll also get at that meeting with the registrar a form to enable you to organise the funeral. Um, so it's a form, a green form, that you take them to the funeral directors to allow you to either organise the cremation or the burial. One thing just to be aware of is often people will have purchased a funeral plan, so just make sure you check through the deceased paperwork to make sure you're not paying for a funeral that they've already paid for in their lifetime. Um, and one of the questions we often get asked is how do we pay for the funeral? Because funerals can be anything from 3,000 up, and that's just for a basic cremation. Um, so how do the family go about paying for this when often everything's been frozen? Um, and if you get a uh, an invoice from the funeral directors and take that into the deceased bank, they will give you a cheque from the deceased bank account for the amount that you need for the funeral, payable to the funeral directors. So don't worry, that is definitely one thing you can get access to without the family having to pay it themselves. The next really important thing to do is to check whether the deceased had a will. Um, so that's a legal document that will have been prepared by the deceased in their lifetime to say exactly what they wanted to happen upon their death. If they have got a will, make sure you find the, the most recent will, so the will they did last before they passed away, because people can do as many wills as they want during their lifetime. And believe it or not, there isn't a central wills register in the UK. That's a question we get asked a lot. There's no one register where you can check if the deceased has got a will. So you need to check with all the people who you think they may have done a will with, any solicitor they've ever dealt with, any WH Smith's package they've ever bought to see if they've done one. Um, the will then will say who are the executors. So and the executors will be the people who will administer that estate. So it will be those people who are responsible for then dealing with the process going forward. If there's no will, the deceased is called um, intestate, so they've died under the rules of intestacy, uh, which is a, a set of rules prescribed by the government as to who then will administer the estate and who will inherit the estate. And we're going to do a separate blog on those specific rules of intestacy, so feel free to have a, uh, have a listen to that about who will go on to be the administrator of the estate. But assuming then we know who's responsible for dealing with the deceased estate going forward, the first thing to do is, what I always do, is set up a list of everybody you're going to have to notify. So everybody who the deceased had dealings with, from banks, investment companies, to potential shareholdings, to utility companies, to mortgage companies. Do a list of them all and then go through them all and write to each one, advising that they've passed away, sending a copy of the death certificate. Um, and asking for what the situation was at the date they died. So what was either the balance on the bank accounts or the balance on the credit card um, or, or 
whether they had any utility bills outstanding. It's just to build up a picture of the deceased estate. And the whole purpose is to be able to ascertain the value of the estate. So what all of the assets are, less the liabilities to work out what the net position is. Um, and it also allows you to, to contact the banks to find out what the procedure is for closing those accounts. So ask, will you be needing grant of probate, which is a legal document when somebody's passed away, to be able to close an account, or are there just simple forms to fill in? It often depends on the amount of money in the account. So if there is generally above £5,000, the banks will request you, the executors, to get grant of probate. Um, if the account's quite a minimum, um, they often don't need grant of probate to close it. So it's just one of those things to check with each individual institution. And um, obviously one of the questions we get asked a lot about is inheritance tax and whether that's going to be payable when somebody's passed away. Um, when you've worked out the size of the estate by speaking to all of the institutions, it's at that stage whether you, when you can determine whether there's inheritance tax to pay. An inheritance tax is payable on a deceased estate where their estate is valued at over £325,000 and you pay inheritance tax at 40% on the excess of that. So it's not on the whole amount, it's just on the excess. And um, so it's good to get an idea of the size of the estate to at least know if there's going to be tax payable. Um, there are some exemptions, so even if you've got a, an estate that's bigger than that, um, it might be worth taking advice from us because there are some exemptions that still apply to mean there's no tax payable. For example, are they leaving all of their estate to a spouse? There's never any inheritance tax to pay in that event. Are they leaving their estate to charities? There's no tax to pay in that event. Or are they leaving, one of the new rules is if you're leaving 10% of your estate to charity, the inheritance tax threshold goes down from 40, sorry, the inheritance tax rate goes down from 40% to 36%. So there's lots of rules there where you might want to take advice when you've got a good idea of the size of the estate from professionals such as us. And once you've determined whether you need grant of probate, which is uh, more than likely in most estates, especially if there's a property, because you need grant of probate to be able to deal with the sale of the property. Um, the process to get that probate means going to the probate registry um, and having an appointment with the registrar there where you will have to do an inheritance tax account. Even if there's no inheritance tax to pay, the probate registry want to see an inheritance tax account, otherwise everybody would say there's no tax to pay. And there's paperwork that you have to sign and swear in front of the registrar to get that grant. And it's that grant then that allows you to close all of the bank accounts as executors then collect the assets in and then distribute it as per the terms of the will. Um, so that's a little bit about how to administer an estate. Please feel free to obviously contact us if there's any assistance that we can be.